Learn English from the Bible. Genesis 34 Dinah is attacked. Dinah was the daughter of Leah and Jacob. At this time Dinah went out to visit the women of that land. Shechem son of Hammer the Hivite, the ruler of that land, saw Dinah. He took her and raped her. Shechem fell in love with Dinah, and he spoke kindly to her. He told his father, Hammer, please get this girl for me so I can marry her. Jacob learned how Shechem had disgraced his daughter. But Jacob's sons were out in the field with the cattle. So Jacob said nothing until they came home. And Hammer father of Shechem went to talk with Jacob. When Jacob's sons heard what had happened, they came in from the field. They were very angry because Shechem had done such a wicked thing to Israel. It was wrong for him to have raped Jacob's daughter. A thing like this should not be done. But Hammer talked to the brothers of Dinah. He said, My son Shechem is deeply in love with Dinah. Please let him marry her. Marry our people. Give your women to our men as wives. And take our women for your men as wives. You can live in the same land with us. You will be free to own land and to trade here. Shechem also talked to Jacob and to Dinah's brothers. He said, Please accept my offer. I will give anything you ask. Ask as much as you want for the payment for the bride. I will give it to you. Just let me marry Dinah. The sons of Jacob answered Shechem and his father with lies. They were angry because Shechem had disgraced their sister Dinah. The brothers said to them, We cannot allow you to marry our sister. You are not circumcised. That would be a disgrace to us. But we will allow you to marry her if you do this one thing. Every man in your town must be circumcised like us. Then your men can marry our women, and our men can marry your women. Then we will live in your land and become one people. If you refuse to be circumcised, we will take Dinah and leave. What they asked seemed fair to Hammer and Shechem. So Shechem went quickly to be circumcised because he loved Jacob's daughter. Now Shechem was the most respected man in his family. So Hammer and Shechem went to the gate of their city. They spoke to the men of their city. They said, These people want to be friends with us. So let them live in our land and trade here. There is enough land for all of us. Let us marry their women. And we can let them marry our women. But our men must agree to one thing. All our men must agree to be circumcised as they are. 
Then they will agree to live in our land. And we will be one people. If we do this, their cattle and their animals will belong to us. Let us do what they say, and they will stay in our land. All the men who had come to the city gate heard this, and they agreed with Hammer and Shechem, and every man was circumcised. Three days later the men who were circumcised were still in pain. Two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords. They made a surprise attack on the city. And they killed all the men there. Simeon and Levi killed Hammer and his son Shechem. Then they took Dinah out of Shechem's house and left. Jacob's sons went among the dead bodies and stole everything that was in the city. This was to pay them back for what Shechem had done to their sister. So the brothers took the flocks, herds and donkeys. And they took everything in the city and in the fields. They took every valuable thing those people owned. They even took the wives and children and everything that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have caused me a lot of trouble. Now the Canaanites and the Perizzites who live in the land will hate me. There are only a few of us. If they join together to attack us, my people, and I will be destroyed. But the brothers said, We will not allow our sister to be treated like a prostitute. Genesis 35 Jacob in Bethel God said to Jacob, Go to the city of Bethel and live there. Make an altar to the God who appeared to you there. This was when you were running away from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his family and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods you have. Make yourselves clean and change your clothes. We will leave here and go to Bethel. There I will build an altar to God. He has helped me during my time of trouble. He has been with me everywhere I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had. And they gave him the earrings they were wearing. He hid them under the great tree near the town of Shechem. Then Jacob and his sons left there. But God caused the people in the nearby cities to be afraid. So they did not follow the sons of Jacob. And Jacob and all the people who were with him went to Luz. It is now called Bethel. It is in the land of Canaan. There Jacob built an altar. He named the place Bethel, after God, because God had appeared to him there. That was when he was running from his brother. Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried under the oak tree at Bethel. They named that place Oak of Crying. Jacob's New Name When Jacob came back from northwest Mesopotamia, God appeared to him again. And God blessed him.
God said to him, Your name is Jacob. But you will not be called Jacob any longer. Your new name will be Israel. So he called him Israel. God said to him, I am God all powerful. Have many children and grow in number as a nation. You will be the ancestor of many nations and kings. I gave Abraham and Isaac land. I will give that same land to you and your descendants. Then God left him. Jacob set up a stone on edge in that place where God had talked to him. And he poured a drink offering and olive oil on it to make it special for God. And Jacob named the place Bethel. Rachel dies giving birth. Jacob and his group left Bethel. Before they came to Ephrath, Rachel began giving birth to her baby. But she was having much trouble with this birth. When Rachel's nurse saw this, she said, don't be afraid, Rachel. You are giving birth to another son. Rachel gave birth to the son, but she died. As she lay dying, she named the boy son of my suffering. But Jacob called him Benjamin. Rachel was buried on the road to Ephrath, a district of Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a rock on her grave to honor her. That rock is still there today. Then Israel, also called Jacob, continued his journey. He camped just south of Migdaletter. While Israel was in that land Reuben had physical relations with Israel's slave woman Bilhah. And Israel heard about it. The Family of Israel Jacob had twelve sons. He had six sons by his wife Leah. Reuben was his first son. Then Leah had Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. He had two sons by his wife Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. He had two sons by Rachel's slave girl Bilhah, Dan, and Naphtali. And he had two sons by Leah's slave girl Zilpah, Gad, and Asher. These are Jacob's sons who were born in northwest Mesopotamia. Jacob went to his father Isaac at Mamre near Hebron. This is where Abraham and Isaac had lived. Isaac lived 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last breath and died when he was very old. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis 36 Esau's family This is the family history of Esau, also called Edom. Esau married women from the land of Canaan. He married Ada, daughter of Elon the Hittite. And he married Ohalabama, daughter of Anna. Anna was the son of Zibi and the Hivite. And he married. 
Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. Ada gave Esau one son, Eliphaz. Basemath gave Esau Ruel. And Ohalabama gave Esau Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These were Esau's sons who were born in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the people who lived with him. He took his herds and other animals. And he took all the belongings he had gotten in Canaan. And he went to a land away from his brother Jacob. Esau and Jacob's belongings were becoming too many for them to live in the same land. The land where they had lived could not support both of them. They had too many herds. So Esau lived in the mountains of Edom. Esau is also named Edom. This is the family history of Esau. He is the ancestor of the Edomites, who live in the mountains of Edom. Esau's sons were Eliphaz son of Adah and Esau, and Ruel son of Basemath and Esau. Eliphaz had five sons, Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenaz. Eliphaz also had a slave woman named Timnah. Timnah and Eliphaz gave birth to Amalek. These were Esau's grandsons by his wife Ada. Ruel had four sons, Nahath, Zira, Shama, and Miza. These were Esau's grandsons by his wife Basemath. Esau's third wife was Ohalabama. She was the daughter of Anna. Anna was the son of Zibion. Esau and Ohalabama gave birth to Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the leaders that came from Esau. Esau's first son was Eliphaz. From him came these leaders, Taman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gadam, and Amalek. These were the leaders that came from Eliphaz in the land of Edom. They were the grandsons of Ada. Esau's son Ruel was the father of these leaders, Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were the leaders that came from Ruel in the land of Edom. They were the grandsons of Esau's wife Basemath. Esau's wife Ohalabama gave birth to these leaders, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the leaders that came from Esau's wife Ohalabama. She was the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Esau, also called Edom, and these were their leaders. These were the sons of Seir the Horite, who were living in the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna. Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These sons of Seir were the leaders of the Horites in Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Homam. Timnah was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal were Alvin, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion were Aya and Anna. Anna is the man who found the hot springs in the desert. He found them while he was caring for his father's donkeys. 
The children of Anna were Dishan and Ohalabama, daughter of Anna. The sons of Dishan were Hamdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Karan. The sons of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Achan. The sons of Dishan were Uzi and Aaron. These were the names of the Horite leaders, Lotan, Shobal, Zibian, Anna. Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These men were the leaders of the Horite families. They lived in the land of Edom. These are the kings who ruled in the land of Edom before the Israelites ever had a king. Bela son of Beer was the king of Edom. He came from the city of Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab son of Zerah became king. Jobab was from Basra. When Jobab died, Hashem became king. He was from the land of the Temanites. When Hashem died, Hadad son of Bedad became king. Hadad had defeated Midian in the country of Moab. Hadad was from the city of Avath. When Hadad died, Samla became king. He was from Masrika. When Samla died, Shal became king. He was from Rehoboth on the Euphrates River. When Shal died, Balhanan son of Akbar became king. When Balhanan son of Akbar died, Hadad became king. He was from the city of Pau. His wife's name was Mehedabal daughter of Matred. Matred was the daughter of Mizahab. These Edomite leaders came from Esau. They are listed by their families and regions. Their names were Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Ohalabama, Elah, Pinion, Kenas, Taman, Mibzer, Magdiel, and Iram. These were the leaders of Edom. Esau was the father of the Edomites. The area where each of these families lived was named after that family.